Shortly after my 30th birthday, I'm playing with my two kids. I have my daughter in my arms and I'm chasing my son up and down the stairs. My heart starts racing. I'm sweating uncontrollably. My knees and my hips are just buckling under my weight and I feel like I'm seconds away from a heart attack. It was a massive slap around the face. It was a huge wake up call. So a week later, I get home from work and I decide to go for a run. It's a perfect opportunity to do it as my wife and my kids, they're out of the house. So it saves me any embarrassment for what I'm about to go and do. In my head, I decide three miles is what I'll do. Three miles is nothing. That'll ease myself in. You know, I've done three miles before. That's no problem. I made it not 0.8 miles from a front door. I was buckled over in two Boken, my guts up, I was destroyed. So I turned on my heels and hobbled myself back home. Got in the door and just went straight back into the normal ritual of raiding the cupboards of any junk I could find. I was just gonna sit in the sofa and just vegetate myself into oblivion. At that point, my wife and kids came into the house and my wife asked, you know, sort of curious, what are you doing in, in all your gear? And me being too embarrassed to tell the truth of what happened, I said, I'm about to go for a run. So totally ashamed of myself, totally embarrassed, I set off for the second time to do the run. I managed to piece together three of the ugliest, slowest, gut-wrenching miles I've ever done in my life. But it was a start. Back in my teens and early 20s, I was an elite athlete on the Northern Ireland Taekwondo team and it used to be three times a day training, stretching, sparring, coaching, anything to do with Taekwondo, I was doing it. Um, there was no divide you know, from personal life, social life, it, it all revolved around Taekwondo. At this point in my life I was so far removed from it, it didn't resemble anything that I was then and I felt like I needed to re-establish myself with it. Um, taekwondo was out of the question, you know, turning up the work with teeth missing or a black eye, it wasn't going to fly. So running, it then became my go-to exercise. So every morning it would then start with a three mile run, a five mile loop, a seven mile loop and then a a 10 mile loop at about 10 miles this was about three months after initially starting and it was at that point this sort of reoccurring thought kept coming into my mind like of what are you capable of um, or how far can you go and it was at that point then that I felt like I needed a test something to get back to where I once was. Finding the challenge, I'd fallen down the rabbit hole in trying to find an event that embodied achievement and success. So after scarring the internet and asking around, I stumbled across the Ironman. And for those that don't know, an Ironman, it is a 2.4 mile open water swim, followed by 112 miles on a bike, and then you cap it off with a marathon at the end. All this sounded awful. It all sounded hellish and brutal and it was a mixture of all the things that I hadn't done over the last 10 years. But then that was the draw to it. So pretty much I had two events that I could pick. Um, there was the Ironman event in Cork or there was a local event uh, in Ballygolly, uh, both iron distance, but being from here, the north coast is pretty close to where I live, somewhere I'd visit quite frequently, it felt right that I book it. So I booked that and again went mental, decided I need some warm-up races, so I booked the Belfast City Marathon, having never 
done a marathon before. I booked the Carrick Fergus Sprint Triathlon, capped off the spending spree with the Ironman Dunleary 70.3, which just so happened to be held six days before the full Ironman. And a bit of a story, my dad came with me to that race and it wasn't until he saw the look on my face he goes are you sure this was a wise idea because in six days time you have to do twice this but nevertheless we'll, we'll skip back uh i then put myself to work so i needed to do a few things the first thing i decided to do was get a bike hadn't got a bike so literally got one on the cycle to work scheme a guy that i work with just so happened to be a swimming coach and that conversation went Will you teach me how to swim? He said yes. I bought myself a pair of trunks and a pair of running shoes and that was it. I put myself to work. A year later, I find myself towing the line at Ballygolly Beach. And as I'm stood there, this reassuring feeling just comes over me. You know, as you've got this, this is happening. All the hard work and effort, it was never, it was never not going to happen. It was never not gonna finish this race. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not, taking anything away from the race it was it was super tough it was it was tough even to the point where at one stage at the final checkpoint I was crying my eyes out you know wondering can I complete this but a bit of a, a story with that there was this guy throughout the day another guy called Mark and he had treated himself to this Ironman for his 60th birthday and I'd sort of chatted to him briefly all throughout the day at different checkpoints and sort of he overtook me I overtook him and we were getting along but at the corner of my eye, while I'm on my knees crying, I see he's heading off and I'm going to myself, you know, this 60 year old guy's doing this, I'm doing this, have to do it. So, finished the race. It was great, you know, for a week it was full of self-congratulations and self-praise. And then all of a sudden, it just fell flat. You know, it was taken away from me, you know. There I am, this 30 something year old guy, kind of half fit with a family and full-time job and commitments that's completed this big big race but yet I feel completely flat you know the structure and the hard work and the focus of getting to that was just gone you know I was at my perceived limits rather than the actual limits of what I was capable of so I found myself the whole way through my training, I was listening to an audiobook uh, by a guy called David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me. And for those of you who don't know, David Goggins is like the super tough amongst the super tough guys. He's like the patron saint of hard men. And there's one part of this book that resonates with me. And he talks about this 24 hour, 24 hour race that he done called the San Diego One Day. And he describes this as this beautiful course, this vanilla flat course on beautiful San Diego with the sun shining in the best conditions possible. And this 24 hour race just destroyed him. It brought him down to a nub, physically, mentally broken at his perceived limits. So there's this guy broken and he just finds this something from somewhere to keep going and to to finish this race once I heard that again it was like a light bulb moment it was like okay maybe this is the path that's gonna lead back to more fulfillment so again I got on to the uh, internet and started looking up races uh, and I went ahead and thought right this is it I'm committing to this let's go and let's do this so i booked the connemara 100 which was a 100 mile race it was more just the the number that resonated more than anything you know i thought to myself 100 miles it sounds ridiculous whenever it comes out of your mouth so i booked it i then booked the belfast 24 hour race again saying that out loud running for 24 hours just sounded ridiculous but this was it i put myself again on another path that i haven't traveled i just put myself to work and again just fully committed to get in there so as everybody knows 2020 was not the year anybody was expecting the coronavirus pandemic had broke out and the whole world had shut down and i thought to myself here i am you know i'm two months out from a first 24-hour race i'm just off the back of doing an ironman and the year previous to that 
I was completely out of shape, you know, found myself with thousands of miles in my legs, ready to test myself, and it was just pulled from me, it was gone. I then thought, you know, how do I overcome this? How do I adapt to this? How do we move forward? And again, the David Goggins book, it almost as if it was feeding me these like uh, snippets. And previous to his 24 hour run, he gave himself three days notice. He done it on a whim, complete random thing for this charity. And I thought, there's, there's something in this, you know, let's carry on the momentum, let's do this. So literally it was a Monday, I made the decision to do the run on a Friday, give myself five days notice and literally marked out a 0.1 mile stretch of footpath at the front of my house. You know, the lockdown restrictions were very strict and I couldn't go far from my home. I literally said, right, that's it. Pick the day, put up a gazebo. I literally wheeled round my barbecue. I put out a deck chair and that was it. That was race HQ for the next 24 hours. The hardest race yet. So I'm up and I'm going and I'm running and I'm running and I'm running and I'm clocking up the miles and running into the night and everything's going the plan. And it's, it's all rosy. But at the same time, slowly but surely, you just feel that creep of things depleting and it almost feels like you're running away from rigor mortis. And I'm 17 hours into the run that I've done 62 miles and I am broken. I am destroyed. I knew what it was like to break my feet from before, from doing Taekwondo and, and it's back. It's back with a vengeance. They are broken, they are black, they are sore. It's just everything feels from the ground up, I'm in pain. You know, parts of my body that weren't even involved in it, like my neck and my back and my shoulders, they're all sore. I am, at this point, I'm at my physical limits you know I can't physically do any more. I find myself face down on my front garden and my wife she's rolling the rolling pin over my legs trying to get the lactic acid out of them and I'm doubting myself and I'm, I'm ready at that point to admit defeat on this but at that moment I've never had so much clarity in, in all my life where all the very unimportant things just fizzled out to nothing you know they weren't in the frame my thinking narrowed down to just these two questions it was do you keep running or do you quit and at that point all the fuel just came rushing to the, the front of my mind where this door had opened on the hardest path but I didn't even know it was there. It wasn't until all these other things had happened, so this 62 miles, the early morning runs, the early morning swims, the early morning bike rides, the strength conditioning, they all needed to happen in order for this door to open. So I find them there and I open this door on the path least traveled and I'm now on the other side of suffering. And that's what ultra running or putting yourself in hard scenarios does. It, it brings up that question, what are you capable of? How hard? are you so i'm there i'm completely broken every rational thought in my mind is saying you know don't do any more all of my 32 years worth of experience on this planet is saying stop but i keep on going Cheers everybody! Thanks very much!